The failure of Amazon in China is a very curious business case. It had all the resources it needed. It has the first mover advantage. It has a more experienced team with the right resources. It has a strong leadership. Yet, it failed disastrously in China. Just this year, Amazon's market share in China is either around 1% or lower than that. Since China is now the biggest consumer market in the world, not only is this a missed opportunity for Amazon, it also means tens of millions of dollars lost for Amazon's investors. So how did this happen? Under the leadership of Jeff Bezos, who's widely considered the visionary in the tech industry. Here's a surprise. Amazon China is sort of founded by Lei Jun, the founder of Xiaomi, the smartphone company. That's right. Before you express your disbelief, let me explain. Lei Jun was one of the earliest veterans in the tech industry in China. When he started working on Kingsoft in the late 1980s, the founders of the now famous Chinese tech company were nowhere to be found. Jack Ma just started his teaching career in Hangzhou and Pony Ma, the founder of Tencent and WeChat, was still in his high school. Lei took a lot of pride in that, and Kingsoft, the company he led and later brought to IPO, was the earliest software company in China. But by the time 1999, the tech landscape in China was completely changed. Different internet companies like Sina and Sohu emerged, and these younger companies are doing better than Kingsoft. Lei and his team went into a long period of confusion, and it is at this time they founded Joyo, an online bookstore inspired by Amazon. As Lei reminisced himself, there was a lot of temptation, a lot of anxiety. We wanted to do this, we wanted to do that. But eventually, what Lei decided on was to venture into selling CDs, books, and software online. By the year 2001, sales of Joyo has reached 56 million RMB, and by 2003, 150 million. Amazon sales at the time was already three to four billion US dollars, far ahead of Joyo. Finally, the decision was made on Valentine's Day 2004. Amazon is to enter the Chinese market by acquiring Joyo for $75 million. It was good news for Lei Jun, but the future of Joyo Amazon now lies with Jeff Bezos. No one at the time knows how fast China is going to transform in the next decade, and no one expected the devastating failure of Amazon China following this acquisition. By early 2010, Amazon's market share in China has already dropped to 2%, tracing far behind its local competitors like Taobao and JD. So what really happened? First of all, we can't have a discussion of Amazon's strategic miscalculation without going back to the time it happened. Amazon was different, Alibaba was different, China was different. Nobody expected that in less than 20 years, China will have the biggest consumer market in the world and its number of middle class doubles that of the American population. Nobody expected Amazon to be successful in the early 2000s when the dot-com bubble burst and Yahoo lost 90% of its valuation. It is easy for us to criticize in hindsight that Amazon could have invested more in China 15 years ago. It is hard to execute at the time when Amazon faced internal challenges to survive in the United States market. It is with this understanding that I proceed with explaining the failure of Amazon in China over the last 20 years. Admittedly, the situation in China was different. With the exception of Apple and Microsoft, not many American digital companies are doing well in China. Here I'm talking about digital companies, as Li explained in a Harvard Business Review article, the widely touted reason for these failures include censorship by the Chinese government and cultural differences between China and the West. While these factors undoubtedly have played a role, such explanations are overly simplistic. These factors have not stopped Western multinationals from succeeding in China in car manufacturing, fast-moving consumer goods, and even sectors where culture plays a key role, such as beer, coffee shops, fast food, and the film industry. There are deeper reasons behind the systematic failure of Western digital firms in China. Case in point is the joint venture between GM, Ford, and local Chinese manufacturers. Qualcomm chips selling to Chinese firms are also making millions of dollars. Kaifu Li founded SinoVision Ventures investing in Chinese artificial intelligence companies that made billions for its American LPs, in this case, American pension funds, 
which means American people benefited most from his investment in China. The point is, American companies and investors did very well in China, except for the so-called tech companies, and the reason seems to go a lot deeper than simply censorship and cultural differences. So what is it? First up, as explained by JD's founder Liu Qiangdong, it was the lack of trust and authorization to the local Chinese executives that hindered the company's growth in China. This is what he said. It's a shame that they failed. When we were competing against them years ago, we felt that their main reason was a lack of trust towards their Chinese management team. You can see that their general managers were always non-Chinese, and they have never even lived in China before. How can you fight a competition like that? This is a common mistake that was made by many U.S. companies when they were trying to enter the Chinese market. Lack of trust and authorization impedes execution and eventually result in the demise of the company. The company has lost its ability to fight. Another reason is the fierce competition in China. Many Chinese entrepreneurs I interacted with joke about their work-life balance. They would consider a startup that offers 996 environment work-life balanced. 996 means 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. Normal startups in China works 997. The competition in China is so cutthroat that usually those 997 wings. This is the kind of competition Amazon faced in China, and it's not hard to understand that they're outcompeted in the 2000s. Lastly, the most important thing Amazon failed to understand is, I'm going to drop a big word here, geographical disparities and social economic variations. This point only applies to huge developing nations like China and India. What it means is that these countries have moved so fast, so quickly that within one generation, China is able to lift 800 million people out of poverty and comes with it a huge differences in behaviors. Think about it. People in their 70s in China right now, their daily disposable income for their entire life is perhaps $1. People in their 40s, their lives have improved significantly in the past 40 years, and they're used to a daily disposable income of around $10. People in their 20s living in Shanghai and Beijing, their daily disposable income is around $100. Comes with this is a huge difference in their purchasing behaviors. Additionally, geographical locations also play an important role. People living in coastal regions like Shanghai is significantly richer than people living in the central regions of China. Therefore, homogenous products like Amazon are not competitive in China as it cannot meet the very needs of the people. This is interestingly the reason why Amazon India is doing so well, because it has learned so much from their mistakes in China. Without a deep understanding of the people's needs, huge multinational corporations can no longer succeed in big developing countries like China. Hey, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment down below if you use Amazon services. If you're living in the United States or Canada, most probably you're a user of Amazon or maybe even a subscriber of Amazon Prime. But if you're living in uh, Europe, Southeast Asia, China, India, Australia, I would love to know if you use their services, if you love their services. Uh, also, I want to give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially the ones on the screen right now. Thank you all for supporting me. And for those of you guys who want to be a part of the ideation process of my videos in the future, do head on to patreon.com slash curious elephant for that. Uh, I'll see you there.